Was... She crouch canceled oh, that last had time. Be careful. Missed the grab. That was so crucial, but gets the shine. <laughs> oh, this is. Scary. I just. I'm not. Oh my god! Is she, she a lot three O's left it? Whisking through time like the snows of yesteryear, another Smash Summit has come and gone. Throughout the weekend, we were witness to multiple amazing sets and incredible runs by some of the best players in the world. Storylines were woven into our community's lore that will be sure to stick around for years to come. Of all the amazing narratives at Smash Summit 13, one player's run stands out as particularly interesting from a statistical perspective among the rest, Lod. Let's dive into what made this Peach Main's run so especially extraordinary. 13 was on brand for Melee's resident doctor. No, no, not this chump. This weekend, as the MDVA Peach played 13 sets at Summit 13 over Friday the 13th weekend. While playing more sets than anyone else at the tournament, Plup came in second with 12 sets and would have tied Lod with 13 had he reset the bracket against IBDW in Grand Finals. Lod had a roller coaster of a run, finishing with a positive 7 and 4 record, 7 and 6 if you count the two best of three tiebreakers he played after pools, but two specific sets stand out among the rest his pool set versus Zane, and his loser set in final bracket versus Leffen. Let's take a look at exactly what sets him apart. We'll start with Zane. The favorite to win the tournament going into the weekend, Zane was expected to have a cakewalk of a pool. Considered more or less the undisputed top player in the world entering Summit, Zane had yet to drop a single set in offline events in 2022. Additionally, Zane hadn't lost to a Peach since he lost to Triff in 2019 at Smash Summit 8. So what was it that separated Lod from the other Peach mains against this Titan? Well, firstly, turnips. It's no secret that Lod loves to pull turnips in this matchup. Looking at this graph of turnip pulls, we can see just how much Lod pulled turnips at Summit 13 against Marth on the left versus his games against Fox on the right. In their best of five set during round robin pools, Lod pulled 112 turnips over four games against Zane, averaging 28 turnips per game. Additionally, he pulled three stitches and a Mr. Saturn across the four games, with two of the stitches coming in game four. Although he did unfortunately knit one away, which made it useless. Turnups were so crucial in his game plan that the game where he pulled the least amount, game one with only 20 turnip pulls, is the one game which he lost in the set. Factoring that game out of the set and only looking at the games where Lod won, he pulled an average of 30.6 turnups per game, just over 50% more than he pulled in game one. Just for reference, in his set against the other Marth at Summit, Kadoran, Lod pulled a staggering 140 turnups and averaged 35 turnip pulls per game, as well as a stitch in every game but game four, matching both sets with three stitch pulls over four games. Okay, so Lod pulled a lot of turnups, but what good did it do for him? Well, against Zane, turnups were Lod's most common neutral opener at a whopping 12 times during the set, an average of three per game. More often than any other move in Peach's toolkit, Lod was looking for ways to open Zane up and get his punish with a turnip throw. Additionally, his expert item play and his knowledge of when to act on a turnip hit or when to threaten space with a throw marked pivotal turning points in the set, which gave him either the upper hand, the lead, or both. Am I crazy or does it feel like Lod has Ooh. the sickest turnip play? Like, I, I just see so much cool shit from him, and he also, he's also pulling them the fastest in between stocks. He does he's love them. Let's look at game four on Final Destination. Lod uses turnips to force Zane into shield and reset neutral. Early in the game, Lod knocks Zane down with a turnip and is able to capitalize on it by pulling another turnip and forcing Zane to power shield, allowing Lod optimal time to get in positioning, force Zane to retreat, and capitalize on his less than ideal approach with a dash attack into up air to take an early lead. He does this again in the same game with a back-to-back -back turnip throw, putting Zane at a disadvantage and punishing his approach with yet another kill confirm up air. Again from Game 4, we get an incredible example of both hit confirming with a turnip and threatening space when Lod pulls a stitch face. He lands a crucial hit on Zane and then sets up an edge guard by throwing the turnip where Zane wants to go, disrupting his recovery and forcing him to up B at a suboptimal time. Unfortunately, Lod drops the edge guard here, allowing Zane back on stage, but we can see what he's going for extremely clearly. It's important to remember that it's just as important as opening up neutral with a turnip hit confirm as it is to threaten space and recovery with a turnip. In their second game of the set, Lod expertly hits Zane's shield with a turnip to keep him locked in the corner and set up for an easy edge guard into a kill confirm, utilizing a new setup where Lod will fake a light shield Marth killer, but instead of falling to the ledge, he faces away from Zane and hits him with the back hitbox of up smash. We see Lod apply this same idea again in game two when he throws a dot eyes turnip off stage to force Zane to recover in a less than ideal way, and again up smashes him with his back turned for the kill. 
Let's take a look at one more time where Lod threatens Zane's recovery with a turn up throw and confirms a kill with the same setup in game three. Uh, yes. Ooh, what a reverse. Yes, sir. Okay. In the same game, he actually kills with a dot eyes throw to ruin Zane's recovery. That is golden. In addition to his turn up play, he obviously read Armada's matchup guide to Marth, as he consistently approached with his back to Zane, throwing out both approaching and retreating bears throughout the set, facing away from Zane as much as he possibly could. Lod's neutral interactions with Zane were textbook for not just the Peach vs. Marth matchup, but every matchup in the game. Vacillating between sticking to a patient dash dance game and smelling blood in the water and going in, Lod's decisive victory over Zane was marked by his ability to push his punishes farther. According to the post-match slippy stats, Lod clocked in 6.6 .6 openings per kill against Zane's 8.6, needing exactly two fewer openings per KO in their set. Lod also stuck to the Peach handbook to find kills on Zayn, oftentimes challenging him offstage with Peach's ability to float and making recovery a nightmare. After landing a down smash during Game 2 on Dreamland, Lod covers Zayn's recovery option by floating out and landing a well-spaced back air to seal the stop. To seal the win during Game 3, Lod finds a dash attack and goes deep offstage with Nair to stuff Zayn's recovery and net an early kill with Marth at just 60%. His ability to find these kills offstage were the difference maker in this set and the sets to follow during his summit run. Alright, now for a change of pace, let's take a look at the set with Leffen. If you are included into Melee history, let's set the stage for you. Leffen is historically the Peach Slayer, having been one of the defining reasons Armada picked up Fox as a secondary and absolutely demolishing any Peach in his path to victory. Lod beating Leffen is impressive, but what makes the set stand out as absolutely monumental is the fact that Lod didn't drop a game. The last time Leffen was 3-0'd by a Peach player was when he lost to Armada in Grand Finals of Beauty 9 in Sweden in December of 2014. That's seven and a half years of not getting swept by the character. The last time Leffen lost to a solo Peach main was Air 3 in 2016 against Triff, but that set has an asterisk by it as Leffen only went Mewtwo and Falco that tournament. The last time his Fox lost against a solo Peach? You guessed it. Once again, the set against Armada at Beauty 9 in 2014 before he started dual maining Fox. How then did Lod manage to do the unthinkable and beat the impervious Leffen at his best matchup? Let's find out. If you're looking for his turn up play, it was barely on display during this set. In fact, Lod only pulled an average of 14.3 turn ups per game in the three games he played against Leffen. That's half of his 28 turn up pulls per game versus Zane. Now, I know what you may be thinking. Of course, Lod didn't pull as many turn ups against Leffen. Leffen simply wouldn't let him pull turn ups by applying positional pressure. However, the set that was played tells an entirely different story, and Lod himself has stated his game plan versus Fox is one that doesn't involve turn ups whatsoever. Lod showcased that what he needed in this matchup wasn't an item in hand, but a technical, neutral heavy rushdown style. Now we know what you're thinking here. Peach rushing down a fox? That's unthinkable. Preposterous. Really, really stupid. But pay attention to the amount of times Lod opted to go in on Leffen's fox and approach with myriad options such as float cancel fair, float bear, sub float up air, nair, or grab. Against Marth, Peach's options are much more limited. Her most common ways in are generally a whiff punish with back air or a turn up throw, but against Fox, Lod shows us that the approach options suddenly open up with proper dash dance timing and patience. In fact, Lod's most common neutral opener versus Leffen was Bear, which he opened with 8 times. He had the edge on Leffen boasting just 4.1 openings per kill against Leffen's 5.8, although the two were neck and neck in their damage per openings with Lod averaging 25.7% per opening while Leffen averaged 20 24.3. The two had a tight first game on Battlefield, but after an early SD, Leffen failed to pick up any substantial momentum for the rest of the game. Lod also had the Sisyphean task of having to play Leffen on Pokemon Stadium two games in a row, astoundingly forestocking him on the stage in game two. Any matchup enthusiast watching will know what a feat this is. It's comparable to how Marth generally earns an easy win against Fox on Final Destination. For the longest time, the Melee community at large thought this stage was just an auto win for Fox, given the length it affords to Laser Camp Peach if needed, as well as the low ceiling which nets Fox wildly early up throw up air and up smash kills. The difference maker for Lod here was his ability to find quick openings with approaches like FC forward air and following up with conversions off of grab. 
Here we see Lod utilizing Peach's strong punish game and grab follow-ups on Fox by opening with a falling forward air and converting to get a quick 96% to open up game three. In game two, Lod was dominant, weaving in and out of threat range with float before approaching with a falling or float cancel forward air for most openings. He would also mix up approaches with cross-up forward air on left and shield, following up with either a bear or a grab. He would take these openings to the bank, capitalizing on Leffen's DI and tech patterns. Lod spent a great deal of time in the corner this game, opting to hang out near the ledge and go for a quick conversion into an edge guard against Leffen, reading his recovery and stuffing it out with a forward air or nair three stocks in a row. Leffen was absolutely not ready for this approach with Peach, even going so far as to forfeit the match on his last stock. Because of Lod's amazing defensive positioning and proactive approach to neutral in this set, it went by in the blink of an eye, especially Game 2 which lasted only 82 seconds. For every spectator with a history of Leffen's record against Peach as a character, this was absolutely unthinkable. Despite finishing 5th at the tournament after being double eliminated in the final bracket by Plup, Lod managed to push Peach to new heights and showcase a shift in the Peach meta in two historically awful matchups for the princess. Melee fans around the globe are sure to be excited about this new Peach renaissance, and we can't wait to see what Lod has in store for us during the remainder of 2022. I'll leave you with a clip of Lod walking me through just what makes Peach so fun to play for him from our talk together, which you can hear in full by supporting my Patreon at the $5 level. So I really like Peach because I think she does the best job of playing in a way where if you call out what your opponent is about to do or what you have seen them do, then you can just destroy them for it. So that's why I do a lot of things like run up shield and then try to nair out a shield or run up crouch and then try to like crouch cancel grab or crouch cancel down smash. I really like that counterplay style because I think it's challenging, but also really fun and rewarding of, you know, I'm going to play your game and I'm going to play it better than you. That's kind of how I approach every game I play. Like in Pokemon, I play Stall. It's really all about just countering your opponent's options, having the answers to them, and then slowly whittling down their health. In like card games, I like to play control decks because you try to limit what your opponent can do. And again, just have an answer for literally everything and then just outplay them at their own game. I do think the only character in Melee who does a better job of counterplaying the opponent than Peach is actually Yoshi because Yoshi is literally built to outplay the opponent with things like parries and double jump armor. The two main defensive options that Yoshi has is literally take a hit and then counter hit to start your own combo. Mm -hmm. And, you know, in addition to like the insane movement that Yoshi can do. So I feel like Yoshi might actually resonate with the way that I want to play the game more than Peach does. The only problem is that at this point, Yoshi is so hard <laughs> to learn, like easily the hardest character in the game yeah. that I don't know if I have the time <laughs> to invest yeah, in well, learning I mean... Yoshi. You, you just got through med school and everything like that, too. Yeah, so what's, what's another harder character? It's not a big deal. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and so... Shoutouts to Slippy Stats for helping us track in-game statistics crucial to analyzing Lod's fascinating approach to Fox, as well as his textbook Marth matchup knowledge. This has been Turned Down for Walt. Thanks again for watching, and see you next time.